All right, in today's Dark Side segment, we shed some light on how the credit markets are valuing the financial sector. And joining us now is fixed income arbitrage specialist Don Zito of Brancourt Advisors. John, pleasure to have you back. Always have some very insightful uh, comments to share with us. Let's talk a little bit equity traders and credit markets, right? They don't always agree on what a company is worth. And this is very true right now. You were saying to me um, of the financial sector, a sector that has seriously un underperformed the greater S&P 500 mm -hmm. since the beginning of the year. So let's talk a little bit about what you see as sort of as a credit markets person versus what the equity markets are saying. Sure. At Brink Quarter, our mandate is to find, you know, assets that trade at a discount to fair value, that have an adequate margin of safety, that have a catalyst that will be able to bridge that valuation gap. So we've been looking at the financial sector as a big laggard in the marketplace and try to identify the best opportunity set from a risk adjusted standpoint. Um, now, one of the interesting plays that we discussed was on Ally Financial, which is formerly was GMAC. Right. They 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 were they were used used to be owned by GM in 2006 and went private in 2006. The government put in capital in 2008 and 2009 via TARP and now owns 74.7 percent of the equity. Um, if you look at actually the asset side of the equation, they they have a bunch of auto loans, floor plan and actual auto loans, and people actually paid their auto loans and didn't pay their home loans. So from a performance standpoint, those assets perform better than just traditional banks. Um, those shares trade in the private market where the credit where credit guys trade. Um, you can buy stock right now at a 15% discount to the government's costs currently, and we think the IPO will happen in the next month and a half, and that valuation gap will be bridged when they come to market. So how much upside in the private market now, and I know that the trading can be quite thin when mm -hmm. you're looking at private trading, what sort of valuation are traders applying to it at the moment? Yeah, we purchased this in the fall of last year at 6300 a share. At that time, we thought fair value was 10000 500 a share. Um, right now, the stock, the shares are trading at about 8,800 a share. But we think within a month and a half, they'll actually go public. And the government actually exchanged 30% of their shares where they deemed fair value at 10,300 a share at the end of 2010. So they've gone out publicly and said that they think share, fair value is 10,300 a share, and it's still trading at a 15% discount to that. Wow. So in just in a month and a half or so, we could see a big 15% upside in that trade. All right. Let's talk quickly about hybrid securities in the financial sector. Sure. Um, but both in insurers and banks, um, you, know, you have Basel III, you have Dodd-Frank, everyone's worried about regulation. Um, there's hybrid securities that actually were treated treated as as equity before that going forward will be treated as debt and so a lot that's inefficient capital and so from a EPS standpoint and from a cost of capital standpoint they need to take down they need to either take those those bonds out or redeem them at some at some premium at some tender price uh, so AIG interesting company they've been on a road show we've been hearing a little bit about them obviously the Treasury has a big stake in that company mm -hmm. this is one that you think their securities um, I think we have one of their securities actually graphed here uh, you think they're gonna call that security pretty quickly yeah you know we think for they're they're rated that's you know, the bond right there. They're rated the lowest, the lowest investment grade right now. So against their their peers, they have inefficient capital structure and they need to lower their interest burden. So we think that they'll come to market and take out these. This is eight and eight and a half percent hybrid security. Their bonds trade at five and a half percent. They the government has publicly and AIG has publicly said they're going to come out and redeem a quarter of these issues. So we've gone out and bought, you know, the 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 hybrid securities that trade at a discount to par. And you have the government, which owns eighty, you know, the majority of AIG with a fifty five billion dollar market cap. Below you, so it's a safer way for us as as you know we look across the whole capital structure to find the safest way to play something, and in this case it's AIG, the event of taking out and getting the right capital structure in place. And um, that's we think got how much upside? We think a total return IRR of 25 to 30 percent with very little downside because you have all the equity cushion below you. Yeah, that's very insightful. Thanks so much, John. Pleasure to have you on once again. That was John Zito of Brent Court Advisors. With